name's Aaron. This is 3D Studio Max 2016, and today I'm going to show you guys a site that I've gone to in the past, and I've used this site to develop this for my students. It's a great site to check out for modeling. It's called Polygon Blog, okay? It's up here. It's polygonblog.com for a 3D monster under the 3D Studio Max tutorials. Under this 3D Studio Max blog monster post here, um, it's a great example here to get through the basic modeling skills that anybody should learn to use to create shapes and, and objects and monsters and characters for their own creations, whether it's TV and film or uh, feature films, commercial spots, etc., 3D printing, and whatever. So this is a great tutorial to get through. This is, even though it's older from 2011, it's still a great, fantastic little tutorial to get started. The first thing I recommend you do is download the 3D monster front view and the side view, and which I have already done so here on my uh, on my desktop here as you can see these are the front the two spots here if you right click on them and you're going to go to properties you can see here um, the size of the properties is under details and you can see the size of this is 1024 by 1024 okay so it's an even amount it's distributed squarely it's nice and even for the front and side views and they actually resize them down to 200 by 200 as indicated right here for the first set for the length of 200 and width of 200. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now, so let's get started with this monster tutorial from polygonblog.com. All right, here we go. In 3D Studio Max, what you're going to do is you're going to go to your plane view under the Create tab, Plane, and you're going to go in your front view and just drag out a plane right here. And what you're going to do here is you're going to make this 200, let's see here, did I make that right? 200 by 2. 200 and you're gonna have segments of zero and segments of zero because there's no need to have any segments here the next thing what we're gonna do is we're going to zero this out on the X Y and Z plane by going right click right click and right click and you'll see that it is here in the XYZ what we're then gonna do is we're going to move this back in the Z position or the Y position just uh, let's say um, 200 frames um, that way it's it's off center from the from the middle of the plane here as you can see it's 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 offset here actually I shouldn't do it 200 I'm gonna do um, 100 let's see yeah 100 sounds good so then I'm gonna do another plane in the left view over here same thing and what's gonna happen here in this left view um, I'm gonna make this uh, 200 by 200 what length 1 and 1 and I'm gonna move this let's see what happened here I went to orthographic view let me get to left view Oh, I guess I didn't do it. Let's try that again. Let's go into my left view here, draw a plane out, and let's do 200 by 200. Segments of 1 and 1. We're going to move this uh, center 0, 0, 0, and then we're also going to move it in the right side uh, on the X plane to uh, 100 frames. So that way it's off center. All right. So now that we have that, as you can see in the perspective view, what I'm going to do now is assign the uh, blocks to this actually this should be it, it should be 200 that way they're really off center from one another um, it should be 200 the other thing too is I want to bring this up you see how this is on the ground plane right here we want this to be the flat part of the plane so we're gonna bring this up uh, and bring this up so half of 200 is 100 so we're gonna bring this 100 up actually I'll bring this, bring this uh, you know what Let's bring it back 100. Just as, there we go. That's what I wanted to do. So in the long story, and I apologize for wasting your time on this. It's going to be that, and then the um, uh, this will be 100 as well. There we go. So there's our front and side views over here locked in. And what we're going to do is we're going to texture that. The way we texture this is we're going to go to our material editor, which is right here. And once it loads up here, I am in the slate editor tools. If you don't know where that is, you can go from the compact, which is the same thing, or go into the slate editor. In my opinion, the slate editor is the best way to do it. You're going to go to standard, drag a standard out, and you can just open this up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to close mental ray down, and we're going to go to bitmap. Under maps, standard, bitmaps. Drag a bitmap out. It's going to ask you where the thing is, so I'm going to go to my front view and choose that. As you can see, it's right here. And I'm going to drag another one out for my side view of my character over here. Okay, so I'm going to see uh, another standard view here. And what's going to happen is I'm going to drag these to my diffuse. Okay, as you drag them to your diffuse, this is where they're going to link up right here. 
and you can take this one and drag this one also to the diffuse for the uh, side view. So the way we do this is make sure when you double click on this, you can rename this to front front monster, and this one is going to be side monster. All right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to assign these to the, to the correct spot. So we're going to take this and you can drag it here. As you drag that, you can see that it turns gray. The reason why it turns gray is because you have to turn on the light bulb that's our associated material and viewport, so that way you can see what the item is. So I'm going to do the same thing over here, and if I don't want to drag it like this, I can also I can say assign to material, which is this one, assign material to selection, which is the same thing, and then turn on the light viewer so you can see it in both views in the perspective view here. All right, so so far we are very good with this. We don't need anything else with this part. We are all done with the material editor. The last thing we're going to do here is I'm going to go and enlarge this view so you can see this. And I'm using the Alt tab to rotate around here so you can kind of see this. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lock these in place so that I don't mess with them and I don't get them confused. So I'm going to go right click this and I'm going to go to the Object Properties. In Object Properties, I'm going to go to Freeze. And if you know if I freeze this here, you'll see what the problem is. A lot of times you'll see the object disappear and you're like, oh my gosh, where did it go? So what happens is if I um, unfreeze all and I right click this and I go to oops, object properties again I need to make sure that I turn off show frozen and gray off that way when I turn that off I can see it here but this way I won't be able to click it okay so I'm going to do the same thing to both of these and I'm going to show frozen and gray and turn show frozen gray off alright so now I don't have to do anything here so I'm not going to mess this up so how do we get started? The biggest thing to do this when you model with anything in the character animation or 3D modeling environment, you want to make sure that you're modeling in the front view and the side view or left view. Front and left view and this you will see it being built here. How do we do that? Well we want to make sure that we're not in wireframe so we can see the shaded colors here and we want to make sure that we're not in wireframe here and we're going to go to shaded and this way you can see the objects here. Let's get rid of the grid using the G command G uh, G, 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 and that way we don't need to see this. And now we can finally get started with looking at the face here in the front view. The way we're going to do this is we're going to make a plane, okay? And we're going to make a plane, uh, it doesn't matter really where right now, so that we're going to use this, drag this out here in this view. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it in X ray mode, which is Control X, okay? Control X, oops, not Control X, um, Alt X is X ray mode. So you can see that this is an X ray mode. And I'm going to zoom in here, and I'm going to go to my my um, modify tab here, and I'm going to right-click this, and I'm going to say, uh, actually not right-click, and I'm going to go to um, the drop-down menu here, and I'm going to go down to where it says Edit Poly. Okay, you can do this Edit Poly here, or you can go and right-click this to go to um, Convert to Edible Poly. But in my personal opinion, I'm going to go click here and go to Edit Poly here. This way, I can turn it on or turn it off, and I can still go back and edit the plane should I need to. All right, so once in edit poly mode, what you're going to go do is you're going to click on the vertices that are here, and you're going to start moving these vertices into place, okay? And as you can see, this is pretty much in place as it is. I'm just going to look at this and just put them right where they need to be. And you'll see here that I can't really hardly see the lines. So the best way to do this is to make sure I go to shaded and say show edge faces. This way it shows the lines that are here. I'm going to do the same thing in this view. But remember, here's the key thing. Whatever you do in one view, you have to do to the other view. Because notice this is in the middle of his body and his head. We don't want that. So we're going to move this whole thing and we're going to move it up close up, up in here. I'm going to grab these two frames right click over here and bring this back into back in the, in the view here make sure you go to shaded show edge faces so that way you can see the lines and this way it'll be a lot easier for you to manipulate the the uh, polygon structure now one thing to keep in mind here when you when you start moving these points into place is that you want to make sure that you're editing half the body okay you're going to go from half the body and you want to make sure that these two points this one and this one these two vertices are in line with one another so you want to make sure that the X value is always zero. Okay, so I'm going to right click this and I'm going to make sure this is zero. That way, when you mirror and then you merge the points together, it'll be flawless. All right, so in the tutorial, it talks about going down and it starts to say, you know, skinning the objects here, separating them here, and then starting to build this. 
and then it's going to start showing you how to use the actual polygons by cloning tool and there's, this is a fantastic way to get started with this so what I suggest you do is go to the edge hit that and hold shift and you're going to shift click this out by holding the shift down now releasing now remember what you do in one view you have to do the other view okay so what I'm going to do is go to this view and I'm going to move this into its coordinating spot and then go to vertices and just kind of go around like this until you get the basic shape of the monster um, monster's face in line uh, like that then I'm going to continue to go back to the edge I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to drag out now a lot of people get confused here because they're like well what do I do here with this so the object here is to grab the vertices bring it all the way up to the corner and leave this part at this side and the same thing goes with this side over here bring it over here and uh, like that alright so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue to go all the way around the mouth like this one two, three, and then I can just take these points and then I can bring them together. Remember these two points have to be on zero, 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 so I'm going to make sure they're right clicked here and then I'm going to right click them here for this one. This one can be moved up there, this can be moved over here, this can get moved there, and this can get moved here. Remember what you do to one side, and a lot of times you'll see this happening, like oh my gosh, what do I do? Well, you have to think of it. Look what this part is. This part here is going to be these two and I can bring this out here I can take these two I can bring those out a little bit further and I can also take these ones which are the furthest part of the mouth and bring those out here and I can take this and bring them out to the top here just like it is in the picture let's see here Alright, so we're still going with this guys. Thanks for hanging in there and watching me do this. I know this is, I'm trying to go as fast as I can right now, just trying to get this basically done for you real quickly in this tutorial. So right now you can see, if I turn Alt X off, you can see we have the mouth of the shape of the character basically created. The second part of this tutorial starts to state that right here, that we're going to take this and we're going to start shift clicking up into the eye and the mouth region, starting to build the head. This is a great quick tutorial here, so I'm going to just go here and hold control to click more than one line again in order to do this you gotta hold control to hit more than one line and I'm gonna hold shift to bring this up like this and then I'm gonna go to my vertices and then move them to their appropriate places remember what you do in one view you have to do to the other view so I'm gonna grab this view here bring this piece there and bring this one over here now what they end up doing next is they go to polygon view and then selecting these two polygons holding shift and bringing them up like this so it's a separate entity where it says clone the object or clone the element. What we're going to do is clone the element and this this is fine and then we're going to move them into the correct places. Again this vertice goes there which is the part that's right at the tip of the eye. This one goes down to this part here which this goes over to this corner of the eye. Same thing with this edge of the eye goes there and then bring this to this side and then we start taking these that go to here this one goes to there and this one goes to there and according remember what you do on one side of the view you have to do to the other okay so as you can see I'm kinda of going quick with this if you're taking your time you can always stop the video and play it back now a great part of this video here is that he starts going into another tool that's called the bridge mode right here where you take the two things and you bridge them together again it's very easy you select one edge hold shift hold control and select the other edge and then underneath here on the right hand side you're gonna see a, uh, a tool that will be here somewhere uh, it's called bridge right here you can see bridge and then bridge will basically create a two polygons and make this the two edges and join them together you can do the same thing here and here and then click bridge and then you'll start to see uh, that the face is starting to take place now the last piece of this part is to take these pieces and you can shift click this up as you can see here but then you notice you have a gap here so you're like how do I fix that gap well you can do a tool that's right here by doing what's called target welding okay target welding if you go down right here it says target weld you can take this point and then drag it to this point okay see the, the mouse here you can drag this and then click that and it'll weld those two points together now when you weld those two points together don't forget to shut it off so you don't need it on anymore and remember, you're going to be stitching this to the right-hand side of the face, so make sure it's always aligned on the x-axis. Remember what you do on one side of the view, you're going to do to the other. And you're going to continue this all the way through, basically going up to, up to the side of the head. Again, you're going to go here, go to target weld, and you're going to weld that one to this one. 
and remember to shut it off <coughs> and while you make sure that this here is on the x-axis and the zero plane axis. So as you can see, we're doing this pretty quickly and we're starting to build up the, uh, the face of, of the character quite easily using the target weld command and the shift command to bring these, this character basically back to life here. And, uh, you know, it's, it's coming along. You know, remember what you do in one view, you've got to do it to the other view. Stitch it together and then start looking and making sure this comes along. If it looks strange or things get out of place, it's going to be, you know, just go slow. Now, what we can do is we can take this piece, we can go select control, select the edges of the character, right? And what we can do is we can use the scale command here and we can scale in the center by holding shift and then scaling it outwards like this. I know it looks funny because the voice looks like this. Alright, so then you're going to take these and you're going to move them in back into place using the move tool and just bring them here, make sure it's there, bring this like this, bring this to the edge here, bring this one down. Alright, and I apologize for that sound here. We're going to bring this down to this point and then this one is going to go down to the side here and make sure this is on the XY axis. Remember what you do on one side of the view you can need to do to the other side of the view here and um, I, will, I will pause this video for right now to make sure that we can continue with this here and I will show you what we need to do when you see that we don't know where to place this because you're going to use these lines right here as your reference lines to make sure that they're in point with the part of the uh, character here. Alright, I'm going to pause this here and what you're going to do is you're going to extend this here and it's going to go outwards like this so you complete the side of the head. Alright, thanks guys and I will continue with this in about 30 seconds. Bye. Alright guys, I'm back. Sorry about that little delay there. I apologize. Alright, so we are in our front view here and I'm just going to select this just to make sure that this is, in where, this is where it should be located right here. As you see in our left view, what I'm going to do now, the next step is to expand this out to the left here. And I'm going to go to my edge view. And what I'm going to do is deselect them and I'm just going to select only the parts that matter right now. Which is going to be this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, and the top part. And what I'm going to do is hold shift and click and bring them back. Okay. Now remember what you do in one view, you've got to do it to the other view. So I'm just going to bring these and move them accordingly to their spots over here. I'm going to make sure that this gets there. This one kind of gets about there. This one goes down here. Uh, now this is where it becomes a question and you're, a lot of people ask me, you know, like what do I do with this? How do I get this in the right spots? Again, you need to look at these reference lines that are right here. These will tell you where your, your dot is going to be for the shoulder part of it. So you're going to bring this down approximately here and uh, let's see here, and this one's going to be approximately here in line uh, with the, as you can see, you can see how this part right here, is, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, I'm just bring it out of here for the heck of it. This line is right here, I'm going to I'm going to shadow mark this right here and it's going to be approximately like right here. See these two crisscrossing? So you take this and you bring this down to approximately where that will be at. And it's about like this, right about there or so. And uh, yeah, so that's that's that part. Now again, just looking at these lines, going to bring them out to the outside world over here, just bringing them outwards because this is getting towards the outside of the body of the character, okay? So, just wanted to share that with you guys there, making sure that these are all in alignment. Um, oops, this one's going to go there, this one's going to kind of hey, get there, uh, and uh, this part here is going to be kind of brought out a little bit and then this is the final part and it's going to be brought out to that most outer edge. Remember don't forget this top one right here which is this one and make sure it's in line with this on the Z -ax uh, X axis and again we're going to do the same thing and we're going to go back to here and we're going to hold shift click it out to the left and I'm going to hold shift click again just for the heck of it. I'm going to grab these and I'm going to start to bring these in uh, to where they need to be and just bring them down this one's going to go here just like that this one's going to go align there, this one's going to align there, uh, this one's going to align here, and this one's going to align there, and as well this is going to go there, this is going to go here, um, this is going to go up there, this one. Now, we ran into a problem here. Alright, take a look at this. So you see how we have some extras that we don't need right now? I can delete them 
and then what I can do here is you see how we have this gap right here and we have a, a space so what do you think we're gonna do we're gonna select this one we're gonna go down to target weld and we can just weld those two points together and do that alright now remember this is the back of the head here okay so what we're seeing here is we're seeing uh, a little bit of a, a break here and you're gonna see some some issues that are happening here and I'll, I'll explain that in a second so for right now let's finish it in the back view and uh, so I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna um, shift click this down doesn't really matter uh, I'll bring this this point to there and then what do I gotta do to connect those target weld those two together and then I will um, shut that off turn this this on I'm just gonna go here here shift click and I'm just gonna drag these two vertices here one's gonna go up here let's see here I'm gonna do target weld this one to that one and there you go so what you'll see here if I turn off alt X just so you can see I'm building the, the side of the, the body right here of the, of the head of the character and what's happening is it's great I can see here but I can't see the side of the head beyond the halfway mark so what you have to pretty much do is basically take a look at this from a a, a perspective view I'm using the alt and middle mouse button to move my uh, you know perspective tool and you can so start to select these um, these uh, these points over here and and wrap them around and bring them towards the back I'm gonna select these two vertices here and I'm gonna bring them in towards the back you see how it's right here I'm bringing them in to wrap it around on the outside remember this is the start part where it has to be flush with this so we want them both to be on the z-axis remember select one at a time so that way they're they're nice and straight on the z-axis and you can start to see that you can take these points here in the perspective view and just bring them in and sort of semi round off the character's body and 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 uh, you know just kind of make them rounder if you will um, and, and you know just play around with it until something looks correct in your eyes you know just bring this in a little bit to make it look good um, and there's no there's no perfect answer but this will basically bring this uh, in right alignment for you don't forget this bottom corner here this is the bottom one make sure it's uh, on x-axis so that this is nice and straight up and down all the way across so lo and behold check that out we got this part halfway done we got the head down so now what we got to do is we're going to continue using the bottom part of this and we're going to just basically hold shift uh, control click the bottom part of this I'm going to go alt x and I'm going to hold shift and bring this whole, whole thing down I'm going to bring these all into position over here I'm just going to bring this out to this one this one's going to go there this one is going to go here uh, that one's pretty much already okay there these two are going to be bringing in about there then we're going to do that one more time by holding the uh, shift key and bringing that down and then we can do that one more time and just make sure everything's in line with this character of this creature right here just bring these out and bring them over remember don't forget take a look at what you're doing in this view but also take a look what's happening in this view notice I'm not as wide as I should be so what am I gonna do I can grab this whole bottom section here and um, or actually this part of the, of the body and I can bring that out and just bring this out a little bit because it's supposed to be out further as you can see and then actually these ones are supposed to be in right about there and then this one's going to be brought in okay remember I'm looking at those transparent lines these lines that are in the inside here okay well we have one more to do and we're going to bring this down one more time and we're going to bring it out I can use the uh, scale tool which is my R tool and I can just scale these out like that and flare it out like that alright so this looks pretty good um, let me just take a look down here I was just looking over here I can take this uh, part and I can just using the W2 the move tool and just, just bring that out flare that out turn this back on and, and lo and behold there we have our basic character set up here one thing we have to do now is create the bottom of this character so it's flat and how do we do that what we gotta do is we gotta go to the scale tool and what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at our perspective view here and we're gonna going to scale it on the inside uh, uh, scale it in, inwards like this a little bit and let me see let me zoom in here so you can kind of see what's going on and I'm just going to scale it in and then what we're going to do is we're going to move these points um, uh, these points are all going to basically be, be moved on the, on the x-axis uh, to be straight and flat and narrow um, as we bring them all together towards the bottom this is just going to basically keep the character flat and have a base on them underneath 
So I will move this around here, give or take, and if you want, you can actually do this one more time. Um, it looks like I actually am not flat here. These should be flat on the y-axis. I don't know why this is. Yeah, let me undo that. So these all should be flat. I don't know why I must have moved it by accident. All right, it's not the end of the world. Okay, so uh, then what we're going to do is take these and zero them out on the on the uh, the x-axis, zero, 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 right? So remember, we're just making sure that they're all flat here. And we just bring them in, zero axis, zero axis, zero x-axis. And just making sure that that one's zero also. All right, so that looks pretty good. So as you can see, zooming out here, you can see that we have our character halfway built. And now we have to work on the arms. Now, the arms are quite easy here. Uh, I apologize about that screen coming up here. What's happening here and what we got to do next is to go to our polygon. We're going to select our polygon for the arm. Now the arm is located right here. Now we cannot see it in our side view here. Even if I'm in x-ray mode, I can't really see what's going on, but I know it's roughly in the same spot. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the extrude tool. Okay, and then the extrude is right here. We're going to extrude and you can click it here or you can click the settings tool and then um, use the settings dialog box to you know bring it in or out and we're going to bring it out and then we're going to use the move tool okay to move the uh oops, excuse me the uh, i gotta hit check on this and i'm going to move the polygon tool up i'm going to leave this in x-ray mode and what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our points are all uh, lined up together here so we're going to just drag them together and make sure that they're all basically in line with one another uh for the for the body here. Now you notice this part right here, okay, let me just kind of square this off here for you. Um, it's not in line with this, so we need to make sure we go into our left view and realign the side of the arm. You see on the top here, on the top left, it's also moving, so when I do that, all right. So we're going to do that one more time. We're going to extrude this out, and, and we're just going to extrude one more time, and we can just bring this out to about there and say, yep, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go use this, the scale tool and we can grow this in scale up to there. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect, but we're, we're going for the rough, you know, rough size here. Just bring this up a little bit. Back to extrude. We're going to do extrude one more time. Okay, not that far this time. We're going to bring it back into about here. We're looking in the front view now. And then we're going to um, hit OK. And then we're going to scale that down using the scale tool and bring that right back down to there. So you'll notice right now, once we're done with this, we basically have our character created um, halfway. We're basically almost done. We're about 80% done with this character. And what we got to do now is just finish the mouth and the eyes, and I will show you how to do that right now. All right, so when it comes to the mouth and the eyes, what you want to do is just zoom in to here, and we're going to do the same basic structure here of the eye. We're going to look in here. I'm going to make sure in my, my front view, excuse me, not my uh, orthographic. Um, I'm going to be in perspective view just so you can see this. I'm going to enlarge this here so you can see what's up. Come on. All right. So let me zoom out. And I'm going to look at this. I'm going to go to my edge tool. And I'm going to select this edge. It's kind of hard to see. There we go. I'm going to zoom in right to see the, the eyeball. And I'm going to select the loop. Okay. A loop here is this here. The loop border tool is going to select everything that's all connected. It's going to connect everything together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift extrude them out. So I'm going to shift Hold shift and bring it down backwards into the eye cavity. Okay, I'm going to, not bringing it out. I'm bringing it back into the eye cavity. And then what we're going to do, since it's already selected, is what we're going to do is we're going to cap that. We're going to cap it. So boom, it's capped. That basically creates a solid uh, on the inside. You can see here I extruded it in and basically uh, capped it. We're going to do the same thing for the mouth. But if you notice, the mouth can only be done. And it can't be capped because if we select the border, it's going to select the entire rest of the body, and we don't want that. So we're going to go to edge, and what we're going to do is we're going to select the part of the mouth here. I'm going to hold control and click the border of the mouth here, just like this. And I'm going to hold shift, and I'm going to bring it in the Y direction, which is going to bring it back into the mouth. Now, what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to make sure that this here has edge faces so you can see this. And I'm going to rotate a little bit so you can see what I'm going to do next. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to select this edge and this edge and I'm going to 
use the border tool or the, the bridge tool we used earlier to connect them together. Now what I can do is do the same thing and use the border tool or I can select the border and select this closed one and then just cap it. So now you can see that we have, if I rotate around here, the mouth is basically closed off. And that's basically done. So last but not least, um, we have to mirror this. So let's select our object, okay, which is going to be this object here. Um, let's see, let me just shut this off. We're going to go to our modified drop down tab and we're going to go down to mirror. Where's mirror? M under M right here, mirror. And we're going to mirror it. And don't forget to hit copy so we know what we're looking with or working with. And then what you can do here is you can offset this. If you don't see the offset, you can go underneath the plus tool and just you can mirror the center and, and move that around and play with the, the center tools and see where they're located. But I'm just going to play with this number. This might vary for you. And you basically want to keep it relatively close uh, to here and uh, do that. And then just leave it as is and what you can do is sorry about that um, and what we're going to do is finalize this by right clicking this and going to convert to edible poly or you can go down here and then go down to edible poly as a top layer and what we're then going to do is we're going to zoom into here and we're going to target weld the entire thing by stitching these together we're going to select these two points and we can do weld uh, or not weld we can do um, what is it? Target weld. Target weld these two together. Boom. And then we're going to go all the way around the item here. Boom, boom. And we're just rotating around. So that's where you can see what's going on here. I'm just stitching the back sides together. Very easy to do. Rotating around. And I hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm trying to go fast, guys. I apologize. I want to keep this short video sweet to you guys. Um, there we go. Um, yeah, so that's that. Keeping this going across. Now, I'm sure there's another way to do this in an easier way, but for right now, I'm trying to uh, oops, keep this relatively quick for you guys. Um, I'm sure there's a way I can just weld them all together, uh, but right now I just don't have the time, so I'm just trying to, uh, to do this for you on the fly. Hopefully, I'm not burning up too much YouTube space. And I hope you enjoy this video as stated before. So I'm trying to stitch these together. Boom, boom, boom. And bam, bam, bam. All right. It's important you get all the pieces together so that way when we add um, the other parts of this, you know, when we add the shading and stuff. So it looks like we got everything together. Everything looks good, looks happy. Um, so what we can do now is we can shut this off here and then we can go to the last step over here, which is in the modify drop down panel and go down to uh, subdivide. No, uh, smooth. We're smooth, smooth, smooth. You can smooth. And then what you can do under the smooth, auto smooth, you can smooth the character out. Um, to get the character uh, to look basically how it is. Um, the next one was, what was it? It was, uh, was it? we can use symmetry if we want to. What was it? Uh, uh, subdivide? Yeah, no, was it subdivide? No, it wasn't subdivide. Uh, let's take a look at, the, let's take a look at the, the thing down here. We did all this stuff. And at the very bottom of this, we've done this part, did all that. Um, where was it? It was uh, shift objects inwards, polygon, da da da, alt x, rendering, uh, mental right render setup command tab, yep, uh, pure white under model. All right, it was, I swear it was subdivide, um, so it's not smooth. Let's delete that. It was something else underneath here. I don't remember where it is, but it was, oh, let's see here. It was, I swear it was smooth. Turbo smooth, that's what it is, turbo smooth. Excuse me, it's turbo smooth. All right, and remember, keep your iterations down. The more iterations that you do, your computer will might crash, and it's because it has to render all these different polygons here. So what we have here, we don't need this. Um, we can unfreeze all this, and if you don't want, we can get rid of these. And we can just add a plane on the 
on the ground here and uh, let's zoom out of here and basically set this up for rendering and basically we are done here folks we are done with this I'm just gonna make this plane really big it doesn't really matter alright and what we can do is add a target light right here we can just do lights free light throw a light in there no big deal let's move this light up so we can see it and just make sure it's in front of our our character let me zoom out make sure it's right in front and where is it it's hanging out up top here and let's take a look at this and we want to make sure that we turn our rendering on for our light I'm under modify tab and I'm gonna go shadows turn shadows on and make sure ray trace shadows um, ray trace shadows is on so that way we can see this and let's take a look at what we have by pressing F9 on our keyboard alright here we go and there's our character for our you know our monster character this is the first stage of building the character up uh, we have not talked about texturing or doing anything like that um, but this is what this looks like right now I'm gonna fix this shadow right now because I guess it didn't look like the rendering was on for my light so I'm gonna select my light shadow map I wanna make sure ray trace shadows is on this way once when you ray trace the shadows the shadows will uh, be a lot smoother here as you can see note that alright guys well th thanks for watching this is uh, Aaron and you're doing you're watching 3d studio max 2016 this is the part from blog post um, poly block um, polygon blog over here I'm just helping uh, make a video tutorial for this it's a great tutorial there's three or four more others that uh, continue to go with this tutorial here on how to uh, texture unwrapping and then uh, rigging I just did the first one to get you started and the rest of them you can follow along on those tutorials I hope you enjoyed my name's Aaron 3 Studio Max and thanks for watching bye bye